What is up guys? It is Dungeon Master Comet here coming to you with the second installment to the Dungeon Master Toolkit series. Um, now I didn't plan the topic of this second installment to be the topic you see in the title page, um, but all the same, I'm bringing this topic forward because I think it's a prerequisite towards the third installment of the Toolkit series, which is exploration and overland travel. Um, I believe that this topic is very important, no, no, indispensable um, for overland travel, and that ambient descriptions and descriptions that incite action um, are necessary for any DM, both experienced or um, new to the trade, to learn, right? Or at the very least, brush up on from time to time. There's always an, an opportunity for us DMs to get better at what we're doing. As in all things. Anyway, uh, the book that we're staring at right now is the Dungeon Master's Guide. Um, you saw this here in the second episode of Lessons Learned that I, I shot a few days ago. Anyway, why are we looking at specifically Appendix B? Uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide is filled with countless tables, tips, and tricks for Dungeon Masters to use that are often overlooked and honestly, like I said before, I didn't look at the, these, this whole book for the first two years I owned it, but um, Appendix B is one of my favorite appendices. Why? Um, because it has an excellent breakdown of what basic monsters you'll be able to find um, within a given terrain or an area. Everything from urban, uh, urban settings to uh, dungeon tiles to locations and, interest, uh, and interesting uh, traps or ruins uh, that you might find to the monsters here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to ignore all the big things that, that this book is for some reason suggesting us to allow our players to find, such as walking along the coastline and suddenly seeing an ancient bronze dragon emerging out of the water. No, 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 we're not looking after that. What we're looking for are ambient descriptions of the environment that our players will be going through. It's an important tool, and why? Um, most of the time when we're uh, as Dungeon Masters, we're describing to players only the things that will have an immediate impact upon the game. We are only describing the monsters we're fighting. We're only describing the rooms in specific detail when there is going to be something super important going on. That trains our players to, under to expect that we only describe things when the combat's coming up, or when it is pivotal to the story. Um, I, the way I run my games um, is I make the world, I set everything up, and I let the world run itself. And this table really helps. For example, understanding that upon coastal areas you might see commoners, crabs, eagles, um, the occasional blood hawk or the giant lizard basking in, in the sands. Whereas in forested locations, you're more, most likely to see, well, the occasional awakened shrub, not that you would normally see that or, or tell the difference, um, the baboon moving across the vines, the badger burrowing in its mounds, right? And all of these tables are very helpful. Why do we have to describe things like that? Because not only does it give opportunities for our players to invest more in the world and learn more about what what creatures are there right and the ecology of certain lands it incites their imagination right for example um while while an image of a mighty green dragon emerging out of the forest uh, foliage um to the surprise of your team is terrifying um the the thought of witnessing just um something like a simple a simple family of boars moving up along the edges of a, of a spring and drinking from the water's edge would be enough to not only show the, show the players that your world is alive and that there's a working ecology to this place, but it might incite action, right? When pl I, I, I cringe when dungeon masters describe things so matter-of-factly and not in a lore-friendly manner, for example. Uh, one of the greatest dungeon master sins I've been noticing is uh, the players walk into a bar, they walk into a tavern, right? It sounds like the start of a bad joke. And the dungeon master describes, you see a wizard walk into the tavern. Well, well when, when I see a man in a business suit 
walk into a restaurant. I don't imaginally think to myself, I see a lawyer. No, I see a man in a business suit. He's got an interesting handkerchief pocking up. Uh, peeking out of your out of his breast pocket, he's on his phone. He's holding on towards a briefcase, which seems to be a little bit too heavy for him. Uh, so he sort of like teeters from side to side. And um, descriptions like that add so much more flavor and incite action from the player. Even if the action is just a player wondering what could be inside that briefcase, uh, what could be the reason why the spring that the boars are drinking from is sparkling so much, and why is it so pure? Right, um, things like that incite action. A, a commenter and uh, coincidentally a player of mine uh, mentioned in my previous video of lessons learned. Um, he asked me a question: um, Would it be better to allow players to travel in a sandbox mode? or to just constantly railroad by prompting questions and making statements that are most definitely going to inspire action. And my answer to him was, of course, both. Um, by describing things that might for now seem unimportant, right? For all you know, players might be super engaged. Maybe the bard in the team will suddenly notice that description of your of you of the boars, and she'll suddenly want to engage with it. And players will have this interesting and um, immersive, out of combat experience, right? That does not revolve around an interesting named humanoid NPC that has a funny voice. No, they're just interacting with the world. Maybe they'll be moving around the forest edge or across the desert sands or through the cold Arctic looking around for interesting things. At one point in one of my games, one of my proudest moments as a DM was that the players in the middle of a not too time sensitive quest decided, you know what, let's just explore around this area. That caught me off guard, right? Um, and I wasn't necessarily prepared for it in the moment back in my days as a less experienced DM. But after, uh, in the afterthought, after breaking down the session afterwards, I, begin, I began to realize that that happened because my players were immersed. They were interested in the setting. They weren't just interested in funny voices and NPCs uh, or in cool combat, right? It, they were, honest to goodness, looking for more of my descriptions, more of the world that I was offering to them. Maybe just some food for thought. Uh, anyway, that's going to be the end of this episode for now. Um, see you guys in the next Lessons Learned.